the midwife's office called and said your membranes were indeed ruptured. So this is going to be your baby's birthday. And I'm going to start monitoring you. Okay. Now I've got two things that I'm going to be monitoring. One of them will be the baby's heartbeat, and the other one will be the contractions. Okay. So I'm going to attach them to your tummy right now. So let's see. I'm going to have you just pull up your yeah your shirt just a little bit. And what we will do is put both of these around you and then just lay back. Great. The first thing we monitor is uterine contractions and this little monitor right here is pressure sensitive. If you push that little button uh, the line goes way up and that's exactly what happens when your uterus has a contraction. Uh, this senses it so we can tell exactly when contractions begin and end. As the contraction begins, this is going to pick it up and it's going to tell us how frequently they're occurring. Okay, and the second monitor is a Doppler. First of all, I have to find out where that baby's head is, right down there, and his back is here. We listen to the baby's heartbeat through his back, and so. And here it is, and as, you're, as the baby moves down during labor, we'll actually have to adjust to this so that we can hear constantly what the baby's heartbeat is. We find the baby's heartbeat, and judging from the way I feel the baby's back right there, the heartbeat will be right there. Okay. Normal again is going to be 110 to 160, and we can see on the monitor what it is at every moment. Okay. You can have this off when you need to get up to go to the bathroom or just to walk around and stretch your legs. Okay. Now you can also feel the contractions, Juan. If you come here and put your hand right on her tummy, you are actually going to be able to feel the contractions begin before she does. You can also see on the monitor when the contractions begin, and I would like for you to time contractions. That's always the daddy's job. Okay. So you've got to watch. Yes. And what you do is you time from the beginning of one contraction to the beginning of another, which seems a little counterintuitive. Most people want to time the little time between, but we want you to time from the beginning of one to the beginning of the second contraction. From the beginning of one contraction until the beginning of the next one. That's correct. Okay. And we expect that time to get shorter and shorter. We expect the contractions to get longer and longer. And we expect the time between to be fairly short, especially as labor progresses. And uh, labor will get a little bit more and more intense. As long as you don't have an epidural, you will be able to get up and walk. Uh, you will be able to give her labor support, doing little things like rubbing her back, rubbing her shoulders. You can rub her feet if you'd like. As it gets really intense, you may need to breathe through the contractions. And uh, this will be a real exciting time. Yes. She can have ice chips uh, at this point. Since we know that the baby's going to be here fairly soon, you won't actually be eating. You can hear the baby's heartbeat. And you can tell that the rate is normal. She's at 142 right now. Normal is 110 to 160. So it couldn't be any better. You're a healthy lady. You're going to have a great labor and delivery. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about fetal heart rate monitoring. And it's a subject that's very, very deep. We're just going to give you a little bit of information today that you would need to know as a new student going in. Uh, you've seen us attach the monitors to the woman, and this is the sort of tracing that we get. You will notice that on the lower part, we see uterine activity, or UA, and this woman is having contractions. She's having them about every two minutes. Up here, we see the baby's heart rate, 
uh, normal, of course, is 110 to 160, and we can see that this baby's baseline is about 140. We like accelerations. They are good, and I am going to show you an, ex an example of an acceleration now. Okay, and acceleration is beginning. Numbers are going up. We like accelerations. They show that the baby's heart rate can go up if it needs to go up. Whenever the baby moves and utilizes more oxygen, the heart rate should speed up a little bit. I tell my students that if a heart if a baby's heart rate accelerates, it's because it can, and that's a good thing. If it doesn't accelerate, it's because it can't, and that's a bad thing. So that was a, uh, an example of an acceleration. You can see we're back down to baseline, and we had an acceleration that showed us that the baby could, could get more oxygen if it needed it. And now we need to look at decelerations. Deceleration is exactly what it sounds like. The heart rate actually goes down. <clears throat> and so our next example will be of a deceleration. Can you hear the heart beating a little slower now? Now we're getting below normal. That was a deceleration. Now we are back to a, to a pretty decent baseline. There are three kinds of decelerations, early, variable, and late. Early decelerations are not necessarily bad. They are due to head compression. And every vaginal birth is going to have some head compression. It's a normal phenomenon as long as the rate doesn't go too low. Variable decelerations, however, are not so good. They are due to cord compression. Late decelerations are due to utero-placental insufficiency. If either of the last two, the variable or the late decelerations occur, the nurse should have the patient turn to the side, possibly give her some oxygen, make sure her fluids are going well, Many times that is enough right there to stop the deceleration, but if it is not, you may be at the beginning of a surgical emergency. If the decelerations do not return to normal, then the woman will have to have a cesarean so that the baby is not compromised. Hours later, Betty was told she was completely effaced and dilated to 10 centimeters. Here was the great moment. Mrs. Gaynor, her midwife, was present, as well as her nurse, Dina. Dan was by her bedside and offered labor support as Betty pushed through her contractions. Very soon, the infant's head appeared on the perineum, retracting slightly between contractions. Betty and Dan could hear the fetal heartbeat slow down during the contraction and pushing, but quickly recovered afterwards. During the next contraction, the midwife placed her gloved fingers inside the widening vaginal opening and asked Betty to gently push as she massaged the skin around the infant's head taking care not to let the stretching tear the perineum. The infant head came through and the midwife gently assisted in the rotation of the infant's body. Within a few seconds, the infant was delivered.